Welcome back. So sections 1.3 and 1.4 are exploring the vector equation and the matrix equation respectively. Now these two topics go so much hand in hand that I'm combining them together into one happy section. So there's three major ideas that we are going to be exploring together here. So the first one is Actually, we already started to look at this, but the first one is the breakdown of a linear system or a system of linear equations. So showing how the linear system of equations is equal to the vector equation is equal to the matrix equation. This is a really fundamental topic of this course that we need to continue exploring in more detail. The second important idea that we will be looking at here is the row picture based off of your linear system and its corresponding geometric interpretation. Now the third main idea that we are going to be looking at in this section is called the column picture and its corresponding geometric interpretation. So depending on how we look at that system of linear equations will determine the geometric representation. But they are all equivalent. So to get us started, I simply want to begin by refreshing your memories on what a vector equation is, what an augmented matrix is, and what a matrix equation is. Now hopefully you've had a chance to watch the last example from the previous section, so you're already clued in on what I'm about to express to you. So here we go. A vector equation is defined as follows. So we have some x sub 1 multiplied by vector a sub 1 plus x sub 2 multiplied by vector a sub 2, and we continue merrily along all the way up to x sub n multiplied by vector a sub n, and this is all equal to a vector b. Now, this vector equation has the same solution set as the linear system whose augmented matrix is defined as follows. So you have that augmented matrix. So on the in the coefficient matrix is all of the column vectors of matrix A. So this is going to be the augmented matrix with the column vectors A sub 1, A sub 2, la la la, all the way up to A sub n. So there's your coefficient matrix. And now we are augmenting this with vector B. So the vector equation has the same solution set as the augmented matrix, or the linear system whose augmented matrix is defined here. Now, in particular, this vector B can be generated by a linear combination of the column vectors of matrix A if and only if there exists a solution to the linear system corresponding to that matrix. So this vector B can be generated by a linear combination of these vectors if and only if there exists a solution to the linear system defined by the matrix above. So the linear system corresponding to the augmented matrix above. So these are our first two equivalent formats. We have the vector equation and its corresponding augmented matrix. So let's go ahead now and think about the corresponding matrix equation. So as previously mentioned, one of the most fundamental ideas in the Linear Algebra 1 course is to view a linear combination of vectors as a product of a matrix and a vector. So again, if you think back to the last example from the last section, we use the product of a matrix and a vector to check the solution of our system. So before we can go into looking at the matrix equation, let's look at the formal definition for the product of a matrix and a vector, because this is what we need to have the matrix equation. So here we go. Here is our definition. So if 
A is an M by N matrix with column vectors defined as vector A sub 1, vector A sub 2, do do do, all the way to vector A sub N. And if vector X is in Rn, then the product of matrix A with vector X is denoted as A times vector X. So, this product is the linear combination of the columns of matrix A using the corresponding entries in vector X as weights. So when we say weights, we mean the scalars or the coefficients of the column vectors. So let's think about how this would be denoted. So we have matrix A multiplied by vector X. So we know at this point matrix A is just a coefficient matrix with columns defined by vector a sub 1 through vector a sub n. So let's define that column, or excuse me, that coefficient matrix. So we have the coefficient matrix A with column vectors, vector a sub 1, column vector a sub 2, all the way up to column vector a sub n. So there's the coefficient matrix A. Now this is multiplied by a vector x in Rn. So this vector x has n entries. So we have x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way down to entry x sub n. So again, this product is what produces the linear combination of the columns of matrix A with the corresponding entries of vector x. So let's perform this product. So here's the linear combination. We have x sub 1 multiplied by column vector a sub 1 plus x sub 2 multiplied by column vector a sub 2, and we continue all the way up to that nth entry. So we have x sub n multiplied by column vector a sub n. So here is the product of matrix A with that vector x. And so here is our fully expanded product. And we use this with the matrix equation. Now, one last little love note here before we go ahead and look at the equivalence of these three systems is that I want you to note with this product, matrix A times vector X, this is only going to be defined if the number of columns of matrix A equals the number of entries in vector X. So one final love note is that matrix A, this product, matrix A times vector X, is only defined if the number of columns in matrix A is equal to the number of entries in vector X. So that's going to be important to keep in mind as we proceed. Are you ready for the big finale? Here we go. So we have the following theorem. To begin, let's let A be some M by N matrix with columns defined as column vector A sub 1 all the way to column vector A sub N. Now we also want to go ahead and let vector B be some vector in RM. So we have this constant vector B in Rm. So the matrix equation, which is defined as matrix A times vector X, being equal to this constant vector B, has the same solution set as the vector equation. So I want you to think back for a moment at the linear combination that we used to define this product matrix A times vector X. That's the vector equation. So here we go, we have the matrix equation has the same solution set as the vector equation defined as x sub 1 times column vector a sub 1 plus x sub 2 times column vector a sub 2 all the way up to x sub n times column vector a sub n and this is equal to that constant vector b. Now this vector equation has the same solution set as the system of linear equations whose augmented matrix is defined as follows. So we have the 
coefficient matrix made up of all the column vectors of matrix A. So we have column vector A sub 1, column vector A sub 2, all the way to column vector A sub n. Right? That's our coefficient matrix. But now we are augmenting this with that constant vector B. So these three forms, the matrix equation, the vector equation, and the augmented matrix are equivalent. Right, so this theorem provides us with a powerful tool into gaining insight about problems in linear algebra. Because now not only can we view a system of, of linear equations looking at the equations, we can use one of these three forms. So, when we are constructing a mathematical model of a problem in the real world, we can pick our favorite method. We could use the matrix equation or the vector equation or an augmented matrix, whatever we're more comfortable with. And we can switch between, between these formats to use what is most convenient to that situation. Now, one final love note before we start exploring illustrations of this is that these three forms, the matrix equation, your vector equation, and the augmented matrix are all solved the same exact way. We always, for now, will solve these systems using the row reduction of the augmented matrix. So we'll make that our final love note here. So all three forms are solved for now, are solved by row reduction of the augmented matrix. And that's what we'll really be focusing on for the rest of the semester, solving these three forms using the row reduction of the augmented matrix.